And I, I first want to start and thank the team at uh, Always Occasions for hosting us for this amazing event that we're putting together and this really positive announcement overall. I also want to thank my colleague, Minister Isaac, uh, Marcella Manderville from Alberta Women Entrepreneurs, and Phyllis Mackey from Community Futures as well for joining us and participating uh, in our announcement today. And I want to talk a little bit about Alberta's economic recovery plan. When we started mapping out the roadmap for Alberta's economic recovery two years ago, and you fast forward where, to where you are today, Alberta's unemployment rate is down to 5.9%, a level that we haven't seen since 2015. And we look at the diversification that's happening across Alberta's economy. We haven't seen this much activity, this many entrepreneurs, you know, doubling down, figuring out exactly what they want the future of our province to look like and it's immensely positive. But we wanna make sure that every single entrepreneur in Alberta can access those opportunities, making sure that they have access to capital. And that's what this announcement here today is all about. And I have to give a huge amount of credit. We have an amazing team in our department that came up with this idea, pitched this idea. We engaged across government, talking to colleagues like Minister Isaac on the potential for this and it's really come to fruition. And originally we we're thinking of a, really, of a smaller program, but as we looked out there and we looked at the demand overall, we knew that there was a huge demand across Alberta for women entrepreneurs to get that first loan, to make sure that they have access to capital. Because too many times, women entrepreneurs are told no by the bank. Uh, too many times they come forward with an amazing potential business and they're told no. And with this opportunity that we have right now, we wanna make sure that we start saying yes to more women entrepreneurs in our province. So we're announcing $6 million of funding to facilitate early stage loans to women entrepreneurs. Uh, and with that, I'm gonna turn it over to our amazing uh, Minister Isaac, who's gonna give us the details of this program. But I just wanna say it's a huge credit to her and her team uh, for collaborating on this project. I, I can't wait to see what the results are gonna be from it. Uh, it's an exciting day for women entrepreneurs in Alberta. So over to Minister Isaac. Good morning, everyone. It's my great pleasure to be here today to help share the good news for women entrepreneurs in Alberta. You know, women are the pillars in our economy, in our communities, um, in our families, and they're huge contributors to every uh, part of Alberta life. And um, they run businesses, they care for their families, and they give their all to everybody, actually. Um, you know, because of the pandemic, women's, women have faced, you know, some really exceptional challenges um, over the past two years, and they've shouldered a large burden of childcare and suffered income losses, and all doing that while um, trying to navigate unparalleled stress and uncertainty, you know, and they really stepped up to the plate, and now it's our turn to step up for them. Um, because when women reach their full potential, Alberta actually thrives. Studies show that uh, advancing gender equality and women's participation in Canada's economy could add up to $150 billion in gross domestic product. That's huge. Supporting women entrepreneurs is a crucial step to building a strong economic future in this province. And that's why, as part of the uh, Alberta Economic Recovery Plan, uh, your Alberta government has been leading a coordinated effort to support women uh, in building successful careers and businesses. And this includes helping women entrepreneurs um, access capital of, as, as uh, Mr. Schweitzer mentioned, $6 million. Um, we're working with the Alberta Women's Entrepreneurs and Community Futures Network. And uh, we're going to provide financial support to those business owners, um, those women who are creating jobs, um, mentoring, and, and who are business leaders. The loans will be secured, and, or actually unsecured, and um, that means that you don't have to walk up uh, with a perfect balance sheet, because we know that uh, many women entrepreneurs have balance sheets that are not um, hard asset rich, and so they'll be unsecured uh, loans, um, they'll range from ten dollars to $75,000, and they can be used for operating capital, equipment, leasehold improvements, inventory, uh, non-owner salaries, and professional fees. With the interest rate, uh, it, it will be capped at uh, prime plus two, and the term of the loans will be five years. Um, th there will be conditional uh, loan forgiveness as well, uh, where 25% of the loan uh, amount can be forgiven if 75% is uh, repaid in the five years. 
as well, there's going to be flexible options to manage the loan repayments with uh, six-month interest-only payments at the start of the loan, which will be huge. Um, you know, when you're trying to scale up, uh, it's really important that you can actually get some traction under your feet. And so that will give women the opportunity to get the cash flow flowing. And, and uh, there will also be no um, penalties for lump sum payments, which is also important because we know that as businesses grow, sometimes it's uneven growth. And when you have an opportunity to make a lump sum payment, uh, when your cash flow is flowing, then that's a, that's a good thing and it really helps you move forward. Um, the capital growth initiative also includes a pay it forward component. And I think this is what's really exciting. Um, the repaid loan funds will return to each organization's loan funding pool and will recirculate to future women entrepreneurs. So this is really um, growth on growth on growth, support on support on support, and women entrepreneurs helping future women entrepreneurs. Um, through the recirculation of the repaid funds, this means that uh, the funds are expected to stay in the community for years. Um, and it complements other initiatives that the Alberta government has been doing to help women succeed in business. One example is the launch of the Women's Economic Challenge Grant, which we announced, uh, Mr. Schweitzer and I, not long ago um, during Win Women's Entrepreneurship uh, Week. And um, the program funds non-for-profit organizations uh, that increase women's participation in the economy. And I think that's, we know that women's participation in the economy is just critical to our, our economic future. Um, and it includes resources to help women develop skills, access supports in business, and technology and entrepreneurship. Another big win for women in Alberta is the plan to cut uh, licensed daycare fees. And we can't um, understate this, the importance of this. Uh, daycare fees for, for women on average will drop 50% starting this year. That's huge. 2026, uh, families will be paying an average of $10 a day for, for childcare. That is a giant leap forward, and, and I want to compliment um, uh, Minister Schultz for really working hard. She may only be five foot one, but she's one tough woman, and she got a good deal done for Alberta, made an Alberta daycare plan that's going to make a huge difference for families and women in this province. You know, and I know as a mom myself, um, the huge difference that uh, when you know that your children are well taken care of while you're at work. That's so important when you're a female entrepreneur, you have no idea. Um, this uh, significant uh, decrease in childcare fees is, is just huge. Um, also, more good news, our work is paying off. For the most part, um, you know, female employment in Alberta has returned to pre-pandemic levels and that is amazing and it's so welcome. Um, we have a 60.6% employment rate as of December and that's the highest in the country. And of course, we still have a long way to go, but it's really coming along nicely. Um, and we know that our future depends on the success of women in Alberta, and we're gonna keep moving forward to make sure that they have every single chance to succeed. And on that, I would like to just announce, uh, or actually invite uh, Marcella Mandeville, who is the CEO of Alberta Women Entrepreneurs and a good friend, and Marcella, uh, please come, come say a few words. Minister Schweitzer, Associate Minister Isaac, Ms. Mackey, Ms. Liska, good morning. It's an honor to be with you today. Alberta Women Entrepreneurs, AWE, is very pleased to work with the Government of Alberta to support women entrepreneurs across our province. I want to thank Minister Schweitzer and Associate Minister Isaac for their work to ensure this additional capital was made available to women entrepreneurs, particularly now as we begin to rebuild Alberta's economy. The COVID pandemic was hard on Alberta, both economically and socially, and women were made disproportionately worse off than their male counterparts. Ensuring women entrepreneurs have access to loan capital means that we are helping to rebuild Alberta's economy and rebuilding our communities across the province. Research shows that women are less likely to get financing from traditional means. With the announcement today, the Government Alberta, of Alberta is recognizing the public good in filling this gap. Alberta Women Entrepreneurs has a strong history of working with women 
who own growing and established businesses, as well as startups. Since 1995, AWE has been building long-term relationships with our clients, understanding their unique needs, and offering wraparound services designed to build on their strength and help them achieve success. To date, AWE has generated over 843 million of economic impact in our province, maintaining more than 2,388 jobs in Alberta. Today's announcement is a testament to this work, to the many successes of women entrepreneurs across Alberta, and to the fact that these entrepreneurs are building communities and making mean meaningful contributions to the provincial economy. I want to again thank the government of Alberta for this important investment in the value of women entrepreneurs and for trusting AWE to ensure this program makes a meaningful difference. Congratulations as well to the Community Futures Network of Alberta with whom we share the goal of supporting entrepreneurship. We look forward to working with you on providing this capital to women across the province. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Phyllis Mackey. I'm the Executive Director with Community Futures Network of Alberta. Community Futures has 27 offices in rural communities blanketing the province of Alberta. We've been working with entrepreneurs in this province for over 30 years. Our whole goal is to make sure that businesses are successful. We are extremely excited to be partnering with the Alberta government and the support for these loans that are going to be coming through, working with Alberta Women's Entrepreneurs. This initiative is a strong investment in women entrepreneurship. This funding will not only empower women to develop their entrepreneurial skills, but continue to encourage women owned businesses to grow and become more resilient. Women often, as Marcella already mentioned, face many challenges in trying to access uh, financing. They sometimes experience difficulty in accessing supports around their businesses and developing their businesses and growing their businesses. With the wraparound services that Alberta Women's Entrepreneurs and Alberta Community Futures will be able to provide these women, we're hoping for absolute success in all of this program. This will offer more women business owners the freedom that they need to begin their businesses, expand their businesses, and recover from this awful pandemic that we've all been through. This initiative provides more capital to invest, uh, for women to invest in their businesses, and we're hoping to grow the network of female entrepreneurs across this province. We are extremely excited to partner with the Alberta government and AWE in supporting women growing their businesses and are excited to get this rolled out. Thank you so much to the Alberta government and everyone here today. Thank you. That brings us to the end of the formal part of our announcement and to the media question and answer portion. We do have a microphone just to the side there for any media uh, in the room, and that's where we'll start with our questions. We just ask that you please identify yourself and your outlet and who your question is to. Do we have any questions on the floor? Hearing none, we will go to the phones. Operator, can you put through our first caller, please? Catherine Grigowski, Alberta Today. Oh, thanks for taking my question. Um, so I know some of the speakers mentioned some of the barriers to um, women getting that initial funding, such as a, a lack of assets and the banks don't want to lend. Um, I'm wondering, will there be any um, any other uh, initiatives to, to address some of those systemic barriers? barriers or is this like is this a first step or what's being done to address that thanks for the question I think that's actually an excellent question um, as I mentioned earlier we know that um, many women entrepreneurs businesses are not uh, hard asset rich meaning they probably don't have a large inventory that they can put up as collateral or large buildings or, or those sorts of things and so that makes it automatically uh, more difficult to uh, secure a loan from a traditional bank 
Um, additionally, many women entrepreneurs, which is pretty typical with women overall, just, just do it. They just start. Um, um, and that's actually really a, an essential part of being an entrepreneur is you just start, you just start doing. Um, and you may or may not have the business training behind you to put together all the pieces to go secure a loan. And, and I think this is why it's so important to work with AWE um, and, and the Communities Future program because they are actually providing that mentorship, those wraparound services that will help mentor women entrepreneurs to not only grow their businesses but provide them with that acumen to, to go through, through future rounds, uh, hopefully when they scale up even bigger uh, for their businesses. And I don't know, maybe Marcella, you want to talk about some of the wraparound services or Phyllis? Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So wraparound services, absolutely. We have, over the years that we've been working with women entrepreneurs, recognized the needs are very unique. It really does depend on the entrepreneur. But in particular, we found that advice, having trusted advice, being able to not only receive the, the capital in terms of money, but also the connections and the capacity that's needed. So when we talk about those wraparound services, it's really looking at the needs of the entrepreneur and saying, what programs are out there? There's a huge ecosystem of support for entrepreneurship, which I think is what makes Alberta very special. So how can we make sure that, what, what can we offer? What can folks like Community Futures offer? What can others in the ecosystem offer that are really going to help build the most successful experience in entrepreneurship for each and every woman? I just want to mention one more uh, additional piece, and, and that's uh, with respect to our Indigenous uh, women entrepreneurs in this province. We have an amazing uh, women's entrepreneurial, uh, First Nations, Métis uh, women's entrepreneurial community here in Alberta who can really um, offer some important, important mentorship. I've met so many incredible women entrepreneurs in our Indigenous communities throughout this province and I'm really pleased that um, Community Futures actually does a lot of uh, work supporting that. I think AWDE does as well and I know that my ministry is super engaged on that front as well and I, I'm really excited about the future of Indigenous women entrepreneurs in this province. Thank you for that. Um, absolutely. Uh, Community Futures being a rural-based program, uh, there is uh, not, I, I don't believe there's an office in our province that doesn't encompass an Indigenous community within their region. And so we constantly work with Indigenous entrepreneurs and especially Indigenous females. Uh, they, they struggle with very uh, unique needs at times um, and mentioning the child care is a huge part of it and in rural communities child care becomes a huge issue so knowing that they have the supports knowing that they have the mentorship knowing that they have trusted advisors that they can talk to in the community futures offices is huge for them and the fact that many of our offices staff are willing to go out to their communities transportation is often an issue for them as well uh, so we're able to travel to them and provide those supports directly to them. Did you have a follow-up, Catherine? Yeah, to, to pick up on that ecosystem of support, like there, there are various programs to help out um, budding entrepreneurs and innovators. I'm wondering, did, did you look at perhaps redesigning any of the government programs to make it more accessible to, to women entrepreneurs? Or um, I, I guess an explanation of why it made more sense to make a women-specific program as opposed to tweaking existing ones. When it came to designing uh, this program today, uh, we saw and we went out and canvassed the market to see if there were gaps that would hold back women entrepreneurs. And the, the feedback that we received was, yes, there were gaps. So we wanted to design a very specific program, building on the infrastructure that we have here in Alberta. That's why we've partnered with <clears throat> Alberta Women Entrepreneurs and Community Futures who have that network and credibility across Alberta. We wanted to give them the further resources though to help fill the gap that's in the market right now and help allow women entrepreneurs to have those, that early stage success in building out their companies. Now this also complements many other areas of our government strategy. We have our regional innovation networks that Alberta Innovates runs. We have accelerator programs as well. 
well. But this program is really help, meant to help those early stage entrepreneurs you know, that have a small business, that need that early stage mentorship, and that early stage capital as well, to take their idea from a concept and bring it through to a full business as well. So it's really meant as well for the, when it comes to loans, they'll have success in this program, and if they need a, a larger loan in the future, they have a track record that they can then go with that mentorship, the right track record, and go to a bank and get a larger loan in the future. And operator, can you put through our next caller, please? Lisa Johnson, Edmonton Journal. Hi, thanks for taking my question. I'm, I'm wondering for um, uh, for the for those who are going to be administering these loans, uh, Marcel and Phyllis, if you could offer a few more details about what the application uh, will look like. What are you looking for under the program? Uh, like a basic business plan, or or what kinds of applications will will people need to submit? I believe we'll actually answer this together because Marcel and I have worked uh, very closely together uh, with the Alberta government staff to help design this. Uh, we're looking at a pre-application form that will ensure eligibility for the clients so that they're not going through the entire process and then finding out that they're not eligible. So we want to make this a smooth process. Uh, the application form will be relatively simple. Um, we have staff in both of our organizations that can assist with business plans because we ultimately feel it's very important to make sure that they have a business plan to guide their path. Um, Marcella, go ahead and, and comment as well. Yep. Sure, yeah, so on the business plan front, so we, uh, we have a very flexible way of looking at business plans, so really it is a matter of just answering some key questions about the, the viability and the sustainability of the business for an assessment to be made. Um, so we have slight differences in our processes. We have an online portal uh, that will be holding both the uh, eligibility questionnaire as well as the application, uh, but we've worked very closely on making sure that all of the content and the eligibility is extremely aligned between both of our organizations. Did you have a follow-up question, Lisa? Uh, sure, yeah, just a simple, um, I'm sorry if I missed this, but when will this be rolling out? In half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Well the, well, the application forms. The, app, we, we, the applications, can we'll start receiving them as soon as, uh, as early as this morning. Uh, we, we don't actually have the cash yet, so um, <laughs> uh, as, with any, as with any brand new program, we fully recognize that there's going to be, you know, some small steps to get us up and running. Mm. Um, so absolutely, though, we would be happy to take applications, questions, uh, inquiries, um, but actually getting the money itself rolling could be a couple of weeks yet. Yes. Just to add from, uh, just to add real quick on that uh, one there, the, the grant agreements are in place with, with both organizations, uh, money's ready to flow, so this is gonna be something that's gonna be up and running for women entrepreneurs here uh, in the next few weeks. And I understand we have no more questions on the line right now. I'll give the people in the room one more chance. All right, thanks everyone for joining us today. Have a great day.